Hi guys. Well, I'm in kind of a slump. Don't feel like making. Oh, this is freaking cheap. My name's John, and I'm in a slump. I don't feel like. Don't feel like doing anything. It's it's warm out today. I haven't really done a video. I think since last Sunday. Today is Saturday. Um, it's it's been a hot week, so I've just kind of been laying inside. Yesterday we got about three quarters of an inch of rain, so we made applesauce, and I've done things. I've done the pressure washing, and I've done worked on the dryer, and worked on the dryer, and worked on the dryer, and then when I was done that, I worked on the dryer. I ordered parts. <laughs> the dryer's a, it, it's a, this caused this to go bad, so I changed the heating element because it got burned up, and then turned it on, and then it overheated again, and the, there's, there's three snap disks in there that should stop it from overheating or overheating excessively but they don't seem to be cutting out the way they should maybe they are I don't know so I changed all them the second time into the dryer I changed all them but then there's to make the heating element colder you have to increase the voltage to a ring that goes around a snap disc which heats it up it, it, it's kind of a it's a weird thing so it says in the schematic it's supposed to have a certain amount of ohms I ohmed it or whatever checked it and it wasn't in the area that it's supposed to be so it's kind of like okay I got in the snap discs in the heating coil which you can see the heating coil was bad I got twenty dollars was nothing She's been looking at new dryers. The dryer's 32, 33 years old, so it's pretty old, but it seems to be, I've resurrected it a few times. So then, that little heating element, if you buy it from a regular supplier, it's um, like $150. If you order it on eBay, which I did, it was $51. So I have $70 in it. That's getting to be a tenth of a cost of a new one. But if you get a new one, it's got electronics in it, they're kind of I don't like the electronics in the stuff so we're gonna try this and if it doesn't do it we're gonna go out and buy another uh, dryer meanwhile she's just been taking a batch of dry dry well she's been drying a lot of stuff on on a clothesline which that's fine that was the way it used to be doing it's probably saved me some electricity to make up for the air conditioning running but I, I still don't, you know, so I did that and I'm working on the pressure washer. When I work up, get too hot, then I go pressure wash. We've picked, I picked another bushel of apples. We made, I don't know, a gallon and a half of applesauce last night. The other ones are not uh, ripe enough to do, but while I'm up there with a the lift, I'm picking them all. Let them sit there. They'll be a little more bitter. You have to add a little more sugar. But anyhow, I don't feel like doing nothing. It's my previous problem. I like to uh, get into my wood. But I don't feel like getting in the wood till I get this pump running to spray oil on my wood crates to help them preserve. So I got to get into that. Don't feel like getting into that. So then I got to get into uh, or this thing here, the the sawmill, um, the the sawmill. And what I decide I want to do is try to change the um, back to the old belt that's a little bit lighter. And now if this doesn't work. Um, I, I just don't like the feeling of the of the handle. I mean, I like it. It goes to neutral right now. I don't know. I'm I'm changing the belts, and I guess that's what you guys might want to come along and see how I change the belt. So I figured I'd stop. So what I did, um, uh, let's see if I can get you in here in a in a decent location. It's kind of, the legs here are kind of hard to get in among stuff. I'm changing out the belts, and and what I did here was where the belt connects these are just lace belts I guess you can I can't see that you can see that I knew that was going to go down there I knew that was going to go down there and I was trying to prevent from having to go down in the hole but I'm going to have to go down in the hole I think yeah I'm still going to have to go down the hole I had it all buttoned up and then when I got into the camera and did all this I lost lost con concentration anyhow I'm, I'm just going to pull that through but I was going to pull through from the other end, so I guess uh, I guess this is where I split a video, and I'll be back and be back in a minute. That's how I'll do it. Hold on, there, guys. Well, we made it back. You can't see, but I'm covered with 
sawdust. I got this, this is where you need help from time to time. Anyhow, I got the belt up to where I think I can pull it through, but I'll probably botch something. Oh, I wedged it up in there so I didn't have to. See if I can get better, better what I want. There it goes over the top. Of course, I should have probably loosened it. Of course, I don't know. I should have measured this belt. That wasn't too smart of me. I should have measured that belt, but it's too late now. So now I've come up to where they're back. So I'll pull this pin out, probably drop it in the sawdust. And I don't know what you can see, probably not much. I'm going to put this back in there, hopefully. This is not a hydraulic feed mill. There. So let me see. No, don't like that at all. Oh, my goodness, that's terrible. So that means I got to go over the other side and loosen some things. I'm going to take you over the other side. Legs and legs in front of everything. Maybe I should have station braked it. The problem is this belt this belt's too light and too stretchy is why I took it off. And I'll show you, I'm gonna take you off. See how it sags down there? Well it needs to be that loose for it not to drive on itself. So I might have to put a slide here to get that so it stops doing that. But what I'm going to do now is take these adjusters up. So that's what you're going to see right now. And I'll run it up down the track a little bit. I can't fit you back in there. Um, to adjust the adjust where they hit, I, I have to take you this way. I guess I should have uh, station braked you. There's two, see that right there? There's one on that side and one on that side. I have them fairly loose and I have it all pushed in. So uh, I guess I'll tighten it up enough so I can try it. See, that's, uh, that's about where I like it. But I think that drives on its own at that height. It's just it's got a little bit of sag to it. Let me push it in a little more, tighten it down. I might fire it up and see if it's where I like it. Or see if it's self-feeding. I need to make some thicker washes for here. This is uh, not acceptable down in here. It's workable, but not acceptable. Put the run. I, hot out today. When I overheat, I go up there, I'll pressure wash, and I'm just kind of dilly down. I'm playing piano. I don't feel like getting into anything or what I call a lot of times mousing around. afraid of is this thing might self feed there's nothing in the way except for the carriage going off the end which oh there's a white thing that blew in down there a totes that blew in down there I gotta go get it so I'm gonna station break you again because I gotta get that see the white thing down right there I gotta get that out of the way and I'll probably try it try it out without you guys watching it because if I don't like it, I'm going to be readjusting and change it. I might have to change the belt length. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but when I start this thing up, i got to take it out of gear. We'll leave you on there for another minute or two. See if it'll start up. It, will not, it should not go right now. Like that, sitting around for all that length of time. 
I gotta build up air. I don't have any air, that's what runs my clutch. You can see that. The handle isn't exactly where I like it either. It's not in neutral. Let me see what happens when it goes in neutral. two things. I'll be back in a little bit when I'm a little further along adjusted. We'll catch you in a minute. Hi guys, well we're back. It's about a half hour later believe it or not. I got this rod off out of the parts department. Can't see what you're seeing. And this thing, these were on the very tip of it. You only had what one, two, three, four threads on that end and about two threads on that end. I don't care for that, so it was all the way out as far as it would go. This is a rod I took out, so what I'm planning on doing is going to my other parts department. This is, I guess this is straight. Yeah, it looks pretty straight. This one here looks like it got clobbered. I don't know whether you can see that or not. You got, it got a bend to it. Not that that really makes a whole lot of difference. What I'm going to do is see if I got a pipe that I can lengthen this. Shove it in the pipe, shove it in a pipe. And I guess I can make it, in my mind, one inch longer there and one inch longer here. That's, uh, so that's what uh, I'm going to do next. As you can see, the um, neutral part, it, it's not real springy. It is because it doesn't have any belts on it. But the, um, I did a video on making this, these, uh, this piece down here. And uh, as you can see, with the setup I got, it goes right to neutral. If you get it past that point, so it'd probably be good to grind that hump down a little bit. But that's, that's the feed. But you're more concerned, I think, with the return. So you can get way out there and return um, to get it. But the feed, I guess you can get it down to where you get over to that point there and then it kind of sticks. But that's just part of the casting, but if you get it, well, I'm pulling, I don't know how many inches that is, down to there. It's just, ain't nothing great. I guess you could, uh, I don't know how you could change it. Yeah, I guess you aren't going to change that on the little mill, it's fine. So anyhow, I'm going to go look for a piece of pipe, and we'll be right back, I think. Hi right, guys, we're I'm back here playing with my rod. Well, here's what we got. I decided that this was this was the original. This is the one I got out of the parts department. And so this one here is that length there, but I wanted it two inches longer. So what I was going to do is cut this, slide it in this way, and slide it in that way. But the problem is that this, this mic's in at uh, 6265. This one probably is about the same. 6205, a little more rusted. And the inside of this, if you're watching me, there's no lip in that. I don't know if I can... Is... 6 1, 6 1 3, 6 1 2, 6 1 4. So it's got a little bit of dirt in it. I don't think this is going to go in there. It's missing by a few thousandths of an inch. Now I could heat this red and probably push it on there. Um, so if I give myself four inches, let's say four inches there and that's just the length, length I needed out to here. That's five inches. So we'll go four and a half inches. Four and a half inches. That's pretty good. And um, I want to keep this. So that means I probably want this to go in about three inches. So I need to cut it there to get, get that in there, that length. I don't think I'm going to get it though. And cut it there to get it in that length, which that is, 
that length there is uh, about three and a half inches and up here is probably about three and a half inches too so if I cut this one I don't have the original if I cut this one and screw it up it's already bent so it really doesn't make much difference uh, and if I still don't like either one of them I go up to the um, scrap yard steel yard I guess seven uh, or six 6.2 is probably 5.8. I think that's 5.8, yeah. Just get a 5.8 rod and just thread it at the end. Now, I was thinking about a bolt because I have a couple grade 8 bolts, but they're not long enough. But just doing something like that on each end, but I don't have a long enough piece of pipe that I want to sacrifice. And then this is. Uh, this is. 619. What did I say this one was? 613. 614. You could probably press it in there, but it's too short. So I, I need two 8 inch bolts. I might go down and look and see if I have two 8 inch bolts because then I could just put this part in the. I could probably bore this. I have to look to see if I can bore that out. That would probably be the easiest thing. So a bolt will go in there. I just go down to the tractor tight buy two bolts and fizz it in. So I'm going to look for two basically 8 inch bolts. So we're going to be back in a little bit. I got to go. I, I don't I don't think I have any 8 inch bolts of that size. And they would probably cost an arm. They probably cost more than a blank rod if I go to the steel yard. Of course steel's gone up so much. So we'll catch you back in a little bit. I got some more figuring to do. I'll look around some bolts. I got quite a few bolts inside, but I don't think I got any. I, the longest one I found here was a grade 5, which that's just grade junk. Um, let me see what the diameter of this is. This might, this might be smaller because it's less... Uh, that's 618. I keep forgetting what this is. Six. Now I got six one. It, it it's dirty inside. There's no question about that. One side, that side's crushed in from a pipe cutter. So I might have to. I don't know. I don't don't know what I'm doing yet. I got to do some figuring. The brain ain't figuring today. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. Hang in there. Well, after doing a little bit of thinking, guys. Hi, welcome into freaking Jeep. I decided just put it in the lathe and instead of trying to bore it because everything is a little wacky on pipes. It's, they're not very straight. Just put a drill bit in here and see how close I can get to what I want. Now I've already filled this with oil. I already drilled the other end. It seems like it's going to work. So seeing as I didn't have any screw ups, I'll bring you along for the screw ups. So I'm going to bring this in to right about there. Tighten this down. I guess you can see that. I'm not sure. No, you can't see that. Let me back you up a little bit. You got to um, tighten the tailstock in. That's all I'm doing. Tighten the tailstock. Now this is a um, hydraulic tailstock. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on here, here, and then it's going to go in. And you have the feed rate back here, which I've got the feed rate about what I want. So now it's just going to be a long boring thing, but what makes it nice, I don't know if you can see it, right here is my foot pedal, so you can, you'll hear the motor change. Well, believe it or not, that's coming out as that's changing. I got it probably a little slow. You can see it right here, it's coming out. All right, I got it filled with oil, so now we're gonna see what we can screw up. I'm gonna be stepping on the pedal and it's not the sharpest bit in the world, but this is still a lot faster to bore. And then I might face it off and a little bit there. Then I gotta go cut those um, cut those things off. Now you can see it getting bigger here. Well, I'm gonna take it into four inches. Believe it or not, that's getting. Well, it's not hot yet. The last one when I took it out was hot as a firecracker. So that's 
you wonder what takes all day or you know coming along bringing you guys along sometimes it it's not as interesting I'm out to one inch right now one inch you can't quite see that I'm at the I'm at the one inch mark right right here basically I gotta go right up to the um, right up to the chuck sounds a little funny we put a little more oil in it so maybe it won't sound so funny don't really care how much oil I get in there okay, now we're up to two and a half inches we're going to four and then I got to go then we'll take you down and we got to cut those other pieces off after I straighten the one so I'm gonna try to straighten the one that was another reason and then plus or minus I don't think it's gonna make too much difference and then I'm gonna cut the the old one and if I don't like it I can always like I said go up to the steel shop on uh, Monday and buy a piece this is one to turn so it's got a lot of grab on it right now We've got a lot of pieces in there all right we've reached where we're at there we're at four up here now we're at four now all I gotta do is bring this button back I can't I don't think I can get you it comes back a lot faster there's all the pieces I'm going to turn this off. You can see all the pieces in there. Yeah, it's right warm. Then you got to loosen this, which I don't know if you can see that. Slide this back. <clears throat> Undo this. I don't know where you're at in the camera. Uh, it's hitting the drill bit. I got to go back. I'll take the drill bit out there now we'll be back in a minute and I think it'll fit hi guys well I think I got what I want which is basically this going in there the problem is now it's stuck I got to uh, this is this is a little bit warm and warm would make it expand to be a little bit bigger um so I might have to heat it up to uh, get that rod get those rods in but uh, this one here I gotta you can can you see the bend in it I don't know whether you can yeah you can see it so I gotta do a little I gotta get it straight as I can down to that uh, that mark there so um, it'd be easier to try to straighten it while it's um uh oh my leg my leg collapsed on me here wait a second uh, it'd be easier to straighten out where I can hold this and bang it on the anvil over there so that's what I'm gonna do I'll probably put dents in it so at that point I might have to put these pieces here and here I should probably do it while I can clamp it on here maybe I'll do that I'll uh, cut it long and cut it long, cut it long, cut it long. Then I can put that in and try to straighten it on the uh, lathe a little bit, push it around on the lathe a little bit, um, and I can hold it hold it in the lathe if I cut it longer. So um, we'll see in a little bit. Okay, bye bye. Hi guys, we're welcome welcome back. We're gonna cut this one length off here. It ain't too much, just a little bandsaw cut. So let's get cut. There's one. Now I'm going to take this, I guess I'll. I'm going to take this uh, back up the lathe and put a bevel on that. There's probably the same bolt that I needed right there. Yeah. Galvanized. I don't want to be welding galvanized. So it'll get that it'll get that burr off there and not have such a sharp edge going in. So if I bevel that. So now I'm going to take this other piece. 
over to the press which you guys got to hold on here I ain't going to turn you off on this one stick it down in here the best I can take my extension cord which I need one of those up at the up at the uh, house I don't know what's going on here I got got tripods doing everything now let me take the extension cords off of here and I'm going to try to straighten this rod a bit now this might take some take some time so I probably won't uh, things are in the way here so that's that's what I got to do and I don't want to I don't want to get it on the thread, so that's that's where I'm going for it. So I need something to boost this up just a quarter of an inch there. Oh, I know there's got to be some slop in here. Oh yeah. So let me see if I can't get that in, get that straight, get that on that edge there, get that there. That yeah, looks pretty close. I guess I gotta turn that so it comes down. I'm hoping that you're in the screen. I can't really see. That's about where I want it right there. I can feel something moving. But a lot of times it goes back to right where it was. Ooh, that's a lot better. Oh, there's a little high spot right there. Yeah, I can feel it when I rotate that a little bit. Uh, I should have stopped that. That is probably all the straighter you're going to get that. I don't didn't bring a straight edge down. And still got, still got a little bit there. So, yeah, I think we can see it. Where's that white dot? Right there. Like I said, this isn't strong stuff, but. When you go beating on it with a hammer, it's still got a curve to it. I need a. I didn't bring a straight edge down. I have to look over here and see if I got one. Anyhow, I'll bring you back in a little bit. Um, so we'll see you in a minute. Well, guys, I figure you guys want to see. This is how I straighten it. I just would put the indicator on there and tap it here. I got it on the threads because it, it was a little bent there. But it's... Um, what's that? That's floating pretty close now. Close enough for this thing. There it goes off a little bit. But some of that's the rust rust inclusions in there. So I'm just going to follow it up now and uh, call it straight enough. So we'll take this uh, mechanism off of here. It was goofy. It was out a quarter of an inch uh, even after I straightened it by the best I could straighten it. Uh, turn this thing down. Turn that back on. I'll turn the magnet back on. Now I'm just going to um, file the crap out of it. Now mind you, it's only going in four inches. But it would look better doing the whole way. The file's getting dirty. You ever see a uh, file brush? Real short little gets all the crud out of there and files better if it's not all clogged up. They say you're not supposed to use a file brush on things, you're supposed to use a piece of copper. Um, because if you're using metal on there, which that's what that is, it'll it'll dull your uh, dull your teeth on this. I can feel the crud in there though. Still looks it's not wobbling too bad. It's got a little wobble in here though. But this is straight to the threads now a lot better than it was. And I got some coarser sandpaper here. 
we just clean it up a little bit. Stand back in case uh, it catches. I can let go. Every now and then it'll catch you. They'll pull your hand in there, so you got to be careful. Like I said, I only got to get it in about that little bit right there. All right. Come on back in a minute. We'll see you. Hi right, guys. I told you I'd bring you back a little bit. Well, I've got uh, got some dirt on this. This one went in to about here pretty easily. This one went into about here. This is the crooked one that I straightened. This is the one here that was straightened on its own. So what I'm going to do, if I can get it out, seeing as this is the one that's got furthest to go, I'm going to try to heat this and hope it will expand a few thousandths of an inch and put it in. Now I know I'm just about out of out of fluid in the tank and we're actually from the start it's it's after seven o'clock now I went up and had dinner cooled down a little bit it's getting warmed up hope that will expand it just enough To go in, of course, I didn't bring a hammer. Wasn't that smart. Starting to get a little smoke there, so it must be uh, heating up a little bit. I guess this could be a shrink fit if I wanted. Well, let's see what we got now. I hope, hope I don't have to bang it in too much. See if it goes in further than it was. Oh yeah, look at that. That's about the line. I think. I think. I forget what we wanted. We wanted like four inches out. Three, there's four and a half inches out. So I'm all right with that. Now, if that goes to the, goes in that little bit, we will take this out. Ugh. That's where it fits best in the top. Of course, I'll roll it around. I don't. I guess. Eh yeah, well. Yeah, I'm running out of gas. Ouch, this end, the other end's kind of warm now. I guess I should let it cool down. That'll be nice and snug. Then I'm going to weld it. Yeah, that tank is just about out of go juice. But you want to come along. I don't know how many uh, videos I've got in making this thing. Quite a few short ones, which is kind of what I like. I'm not going in uh, chip chipmunk speed. But it takes a lot of time to do an awful lot of the goofy things I do. It's not just a, oh yeah, just cut a rod, boom, 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 put it together. I've probably got about four hours in this now. Look at that, she's running out of gas. I guess it's not old enough to have plenty of gas, is it? She's kind of just about out. We'll, we'll cook it. Nah. Sounds like a char train. Ain't got much more choo choo left in it. Ah, that's good enough. didn't it? Let's see how we are in length here. I'm just about where I want. I think I'll 
But that, oh, that one went a little bit further than I wanted it to go in. But that's good on length. Now I gotta let that cool down, so we're gonna come back a little bit. And uh, I think I'm gonna chase the threads on chase the threads on each end. So well, I'll run the nuts up and down and make sure they're nice and loose. If they're loose, then I won't chase the threads. But if they're a little tight, I'll chase the threads on that. I also got to uh, weld that on. Probably won't bring you here for that because um, the sparks just set the camera off. So we'll be back in a little bit. Bye bye. Hi guys, <clears throat> well I ate dinner, took a little bit of a break and cooled down while I was in watching dinner I watched the news and saw some pretty sad uh, goings on up in Pennsylvania. Um, I'm sure everybody that's watching this has probably seen that on the news already and my sympathy out for everybody that's involved and up there or heart out for anybody, it, it's a real sad thing. So I'm sorry that that happened, I'm sorry that... Uh, anybody got hurt and uh, best wishes to everybody to get well now we'll get back at this I thought that was kind of important um, I did take this and taper it um, let's see well you can see how I tapered the um, where I welded on I tapered tapered it down so it looks looks a little bit more neat I am having to run taps and dies on everything, so I thought I'd bring you by for a minute. This is going to end up being a long video for a video that I didn't have any video on. Um, so this is just you know, how, I, how I clamp the piece in the vise. I put a rod in here. That's uh, I'll tell you what, this is the handiest thing I ever... I use it all the time. This is an old broken um, ratchet. So I cut the end off of it, and that is the most... One of the most used tools I got in my arsenal of miscellaneous junk. So, put that in like that. And I can't see all the time where you're at. There you go. And I just run this in. It's, it's just clean it up. It didn't go in quite as nice as I wanted to. So, we'll take it till it bottoms out. It's a not a bottoming tap, but it will get to the bottom but it won't be have good threads at the bottom there it goes I'm just cleaning it up I screwed them on the ends up there and it just wasn't quite as nice as I wanted it to be so now I'll blow it out and clean it out and anyhow I'll bring you back in a little bit stay tuned we'll see you in a minute well, have you guys made it to the painting? This, uh, I went to paint and this, this little end came off and you can't put on that so I saved old paint cans and so here we are. It uh, pays to save some of your old paint cans. So I took the nozzle off the other one. Now I'm painting this other one only because, boy this one's dumping the paint. All because I don't want it to uh, while well, I need it. Woo! That thing's putting some paint out. Uh, you always have a tool handy, don't you? That'll keep that one from rusting. That stuff is going on weird. Uh oh. I got the thread so good it won't. Yeah, that's it. That's good enough. We'll probably roll it again. I, I did chase the threads and chase on both things. I guess you saw that. So that's going to come to a, let's see, we got to run that back. Redoing the rod. I, I don't even know if that's going to work. But it is, uh, let's see, it is getting, 
it's probably after 8. Yeah, it's 8.30. So we're going to wrap it up for tonight. I'm glad you came along. Uh, do me a favor. Woo, there you are. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And leave a comment if you made it all the way to the paint section. So this is going on tonight. So uh, we'll see you. I'm going to close this down. Roll that rod. Because it's the paint's rolling around. That, that paint came out real thick. Whoops, I don't know where they are. And put it on. So stay tuned. Anytime now. We'll see you.